Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 1, Part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary introduce and begin discussing the operation of God's principles and laws relating to forgiveness and repentance in response to listeners' questions. The session was recorded on 23rd of August 2017 from 11.20 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So moving on, we've talked a lot about God's laws. And really, God's laws determine when we have something to forgive, don't they? Yes. It's not, it's not like a personal decision we can make. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was something that I wanted to raise with you, is that most people have a lot of personal opinions about when they've been hurt or harmed, mm. physically, sexually, or in any way. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have ideas about, no, I've been hurt here. Mm -hmm. And they believe that they've got things to forgive others for. Mm -hmm. When from God's perspective, that's not necessarily true, is it? Mm -hmm. So what are the exact conditions under which we have something to forgive another for? Mm -hmm. Very important question. Mm -hmm. What are the conditions? The first condition is that the other person who we think we have to forgive mm -hmm. <laughs> has to have taken an action that has been in disobedience to God's law. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Somebody has to have disobeyed God's law. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier we established that it's not just an action, is it? It could be an intention well, or a thought. It could be a thought. It could be a w words, actions, intentions or desires. Mm. So it could be any of those things, but they have to have disobeyed God's law mm. or wanted to use God's law to harm you. Yeah. Right. And when I say that, you know, use the law of gravity to push off a building and hurt you or whatever. You yeah. Know. yeah. They wanted to, they had an intention, thought, word, action, desire, or an intention to break God's law. Mm. Right. Now, from God's perspective, even the intention to harm you mm. is them breaking God's law. Yep. Right. So it's a very, it's a, still a fairly like refined, it's very yes. refined concept. But we've got to, but they've got to have broken God's law. Now, the reason why I, why I emphasise that is because, see, a lot of people today on Earth believe that if you tell them the truth, you're breaking, you know, you're harming them. Yeah. From God's perspective, you haven't broken God's law. In fact, you've upheld it. Mm. You'll be rewarded for that. Mm -hmm. Now, some people think, oh, they told the truth. Then I'll, I've got to forgive them for doing that. No, you they don't. They hurt me so much. They didn't hurt you at all. Yeah. In fact, from God's perspective, they didn't hurt you at all. Mm. Right? And you can't forgive something that from God's perspective wasn't harm, Yeah. wasn't actually breaking God's laws to harm you. Yeah. You can't forgive that. that that's, you know... That's just your imagination now playing. It's yeah. got nothing to do with actual fact. Yeah. So this is very, very important. The very first requirement for forgiveness to actually take place is that some, somebody had to have broken God's law or attempted to use God's laws to harm you in some way. So the intention was to create harm for you. Yes, yep. or they actually did create harm for you because of their breaking God's laws. Mm -hmm. They had to have firstly broken God's law. Yep. They, they, and telling the truth isn't breaking God's law. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a lot of uh, people would say, you know, you know, if somebody comes along and tells them they're fat when they're actually fat, then that's harmful. No, it's not. Mm. From God's perspective, you're not breaking God's law. It's not harmful, mm -hmm. right? To state a thing as it actually is, is not breaking God's law. If your intention is to hurt the person. Yes, now we're in a different... Now we're, it, and we tell the truth to hurt the person. Yeah. Now we are breaking God's law. Yes. Right? That's how refined it is. Yeah. But we have to have broken God's law for there to be a sin yes. to have occurred. Yep. And if a sin has occurred, now, if that sin has been perpetrated towards myself, I have something to forgive. Mm -hmm. Quite simple. Mm. If no breaking of God's law has occurred, then no sin has occurred. And if no sin has occurred, 
then there's nothing for me to forgive, even if I think there is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's something we need to bear in mind. Yeah. So it goes beyond that, though, doesn't it? Like, first, there's the action or intention on the part of the other person. That's the very first thing we need yeah. to bear in mind, yes. Yeah. yeah. Then something happens inside of me, doesn't it? Yes. Now we're talking about how you respond to the sin mm -hmm. of others. Mm hmm now, if you're in a completely, uh, like at one state with God, every sin of another, you will immediately forgive, mm. right? You will immediately experience any emotion as a result of what happened, and you will immediately forgive everything if yeah. you're in a position of one. But for most of us, of course, we're not. Mm -hmm. So we have emotional conditions that exist, shall we say, within our own soul, within our own emotional state. Yep. that causes to feel hurt yep. by the action taken. Mm -hmm. So another person could intend to hurt me and I can feel hurt yep. or another person can, can intend to hurt me and I don't feel hurt depending on my condition. So I'd like to, I, I want to help establish the foundation first, but I'd like some clarification on that at one moment point you made mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. So what if I just read the summary mm -hmm. of what we've documented here for when someone has something to forgive? Yes. And then we'll go back and nut it out. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So number one, another person has a, and you've covered this, has a, a thought, word, action, desire, or intention to disobey God's laws mm -hmm. or to use God's laws in an unloving manner to harm, control, manipulate me or demand I meet their addictions. Yes. And you highlighted the importance that there has to be a breaking of God's laws going on here. It's not based on my perception of whether they're doing something wrong or not. It's based on God's assessment of yes. harmony or disharmony with the law. Yes. Then the second uh, step to, to analysing when I have something to forgive, mm -hmm. uh, or even it's, it's not even my analysis, it's a scientific uh, process, isn't it? It is. It's God's laws that determine these matters. Yeah. You see, if that first step, if we just go to the first yeah. step, if the first step has been taken, right? In other words, the person did sin mm -hmm. and they wanted to harm you. Yeah. And they did something that harmed you or harmed others or whatever that eventually harmed you. you know, there's all sorts of events that this could include. Or, and they did something out of addiction or desire or fear or whatever other reason they had for doing it, they still harmed you. Mm -hmm. And you do have something to forgive. But if you're in a complete loving state with God, you'll do that immediately. <laughs> okay, okay. You keep no, no, yeah, yeah, but just let me finish. Yeah. You'll do that immediately. You'll do what immediately? You will forgive immediately. Because yeah. you, don't, you don't have any emotional reason not to. Mm. Right, so you will do it immediately, and therefore steps two and three really become nullified to a, to a large degree because you've already done, you've already just automatically done what needs to be done to forgive the person. Right, steps two and three that we've defined in our outline more relate to what happens when you're in that imperfect state and you somebody attempts to harm you. Okay, so let's talk about them. Yeah. So someone's acted to harm me. They've sinned. They've sinned against me. Yes. Number two, as a result... Oh, sorry, who have they sinned against? God's laws. Okay. Yeah. So they've sinned against God's laws, which has created harm for me. Which has created harm for me. Yes. Yes. As a result of that intention, there's an inflow of an emotional experience that I was open to receiving... Mm -hmm. via external or internal conditions. Mm -hmm. By that you mean that we're open to receiving it via internal or external conditions. Yeah, what, what is the internal and explain. external conditions? Let's explain. To? <clears throat> There's a state within my soul that I'm open to being hurt in that manner. So, for example, let's say somebody pulls down my worth. Mm -hmm. I can either be not impervious, worried about that, yep. impervious to it, or I can be really hurt by it, mm -hmm. depending upon my openness internally to being hurt by these particular things. 
Now my openness might have been created by other events. So childhood events usually that create these openness to being hurt under certain circumstances. And also mean that hurt exists within myself already from these events, previous events. Not the mm. one in question, but previous ones mm. where people have actually hurt us too. Mm. That caused me to have a disposition where I have not released those previous events. And now this event is happening and I feel hurt from this event. Mm -hmm. right. So this is what usually happens is if we had released all previous events, we probably wouldn't be that hurt by this event. But if we don't release previous events, you will find that you'll be more hurt by this event. Mm -hmm. And this is very important to understand. It is. Right? Because, because people have a build-up of hurt that occurs over many, many years that cause them to become more and more and more sensitive to, when I say sensitive, more and more like... Responsive. Responsive to that kind of hurt instead of becoming less and less responsive to that kind of hurt. Yep. And we need to understand that that is occurring within us because we have not released our hurt. Yeah, so, so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to uh, keep them ordered. <laughs> um, look. Well, let's start. There's the a lot that I want to, yeah, th there's a let's lot that I feel step. is unclear from that. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, so the third step is now there's a condition in the soul that unless released will harm me unless I forgive. Yes. So uh, point one. So very... the, what the point is, the hurt <laughs> has entered me. Okay, okay. That's the point. So thank you. The yeah. hurt has entered me because I refuse to forgive previous hurt of a similar nature. So then, yeah, but what about the first hurt? Well, the first hurt can enter you, but if you're at a state where you're at one with God, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah. So, yeah, so... But they still need to be forgiven. They still need to be repentant for the fact that they had the desire. The, the damage to them is still the same. Yes, but that's... that's We'll talk about repentance in the next section. Exactly. So we're talking here purely about when I have something to forgive. Yes. Because we need to be very clear about yes. what that is. Yes. So the f first thing is? The first thing is, we got that one. Somebody wants to break God's laws in a way that it will harm me. Somebody had to sin. And it they harmed, sinned. And it harmed yep. me. Yeah. Number two well, is, they want, It's not even that they harmed me. They, they just had to want to harm me. Because it might not have harmed me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Their intention was to harm me. Their intention was to harm me. And number two is as a result of the intention, and this is where I want to clarify, I, I've understood it to be as a result of their intention, there's a hurt that comes up in me that I hold on to. And that, mm. But what I want to clarify is, you know, this Why idea... Why does this hurt come up in you is the question, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm getting there. But there's more to to what we said previously about the inflow of emotional experience. So where is this flow coming from? I thought it was from me. No, the inflow of emotional experience comes from our openness to receiving the hurt based emotion that was the intention of the individual. So, so, so are you saying that there's a quality, there's a substance to your intention that mm -hmm. can enter me? Yes. And that's what hurts? Yes. Right. So and when you we have talk to be about open to a, receiving it. Yes. And so when we talk about at a very basic first hurt, mm -hmm. uh, so very often that's when we're a young child, mm -hmm. not always. Sometimes we can have a first hurt. Well, my, all the time it's when we're young children. Is it? Because, because yes, every single person on the planet is not perfect at this stage. Every single planet, person on the planet does damage to their children. And as a result, there's emotional openness that's created in the children. And the children are like blank slates emotionally. So, so the very first hurt enters them very easily because there's no 
structure to prevent the hurt from entering them at this point. Mm -hmm. right? And the only time that wouldn't be the case is if the parents were at one with God and the child was born in a state of perfection and under those circumstances, they wouldn't have that openness. Mm. But, but aside from that, every single person has the openness and therefore every single child has the openness to receive certain kinds of hurt. And the kinds of hurt they can receive are dependent upon the parent's emotional condition. Yes. Condition. So, so what I understand is that somebody desires to sin, um, this intention... Well, be careful here too, because it doesn't... They may have just an intention to get an addiction met. From God's perspective, that's an intention to harm somebody. So yep. we've got to be making sure here that we're understanding it from God's perspective, not from our own. For most people on the planet, an intention to get an addiction met is not harmful. No. But most... from God's perspective, it is. So, yeah. Yeah. So we know... So. We know it's a very fine analysis yes. of, of, of disobedience and obedience with God's laws. Correct. And any time we want to act in an addiction, we want to avoid humility, we want to... We're in a sin. We're, we've sinned. We've sinned. We've broken the law or attempted to disobey the law is a better way of saying it. Yes. And therefore, and potentially that's going to create harm for firstly ourselves and then for every person that we've perpetrated that again. Yeah. Well, you're saying it's not potential. It does happen for me, doesn't it? It's just potential for others. Yes, depending yes. on who we've interacted with, yes. Got you. Mm. Okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's get to two. Mm -hmm. Because basically now you're saying that that intention to sin within me, let's use an example, mm -hmm. me towards you, mm -hmm. has a substance in and of itself. And if you are open to that, mm -hmm. It will enter you. Yes. At a soul level. The, the emotion, which is, remember, measurable and quantifiable, yeah. exits you and actually physically enters my soul mm -hmm. because I've got an openness to receiving that emotion. Yes. Caused by some previous events that I have not released. Or if I'm a child, just because I'm generally open. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because this is very relevant. The childhood experience is very relevant to our later discussion. Of course. It's of course. very relevant. So it's important to understand that a child is open slate and therefore yes. we receive almost every emotion that's intentionally bad. Towards it. Towards it, yeah. Yeah, any intentional emotion towards a child, bad or good. And often even non-intentional ones will, yes. it will receive as well. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So that's entered us. Mm -hmm. Now there's a hurt within us. There is quantifiable, measurable, affecting our soul, just like every other mathematical hurt. Yes. Yep. And so that harm is now inside of me. Now we have the conditions under which I have something to forgive. Yes. Now I've got hurt within me that I'm carrying around that is damaging me. Yes. And whether I, if I don't forgive, I carry it around, it's going to fester. It's like a, yep. it's like a boil in our skin Yes. That festers and festers and festers and get worse. It's almost like, you know, it's like gangrene in our body, if you yeah. like, to our soul. Yeah. It's, a, it's a thing that eats us away, eats away at us now. That's yeah. what it's doing. It's yeah. a, that's the result of it. Mm -hmm. it. It will do that to our soul. True. Eat us away if we're not careful. Very intense. And what I mean by careful is if we don't forgive, <laughs> it's going to eat the life out of us. Yes. Mm. Okay. So that's clear. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple of points that I raised from our notes that mm -hmm. I felt were a little bit unclear obscure. and then <laughs> obscure, wordy. And then there's then there's the example of it one with God, which I want to come to at the end. Okay. Of course, yeah. yeah. So we said here that as a result of the intention of another person mm -hmm. to sin and to harm me. Mm -hmm. There's an inflow of emotional experience that I was open to receiving. And so that's clear now. That's mm -hmm. because there is an emotional substance inside the person with the intention mm -hmm. that can enter the person that they intend to harm if that person is open. Yes. Um, now, you have a note here that says open to receiving via internal or external conditions. Mm -hmm. Could you please clarify what you mean by that? 
Well, the internal conditions are things like um, where previous experiences of a similar nature have not been released and they have caused you to believe certain things about yourself that now make you open to receiving this other hurt mm -hmm. from an individual. Mm -hmm. So these are things that are stored within my soul that I've yet to release for whatever reasons yep. that come from my previous experience. Yep. And I'm not talking about past lives here because there are none. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my experience from the time of conception yep. to now, any time in that period. So that's my an internal thing that's going on. There could also be external factors. For example, there could be things going on around the individual, mm -hmm. um, like a war mm -hmm. or other people getting harmed that in this particular instance have created a fear in you internally yes that then allow certain people to harm you in ways that you wouldn't normally have allowed them to harm you under normal circumstances could you give an example of that well war is a great example of yeah. that where you, you can have a lot of terrible things happening around you and as a result of that you become more open to specific events uh, and uh, by certain you know states of emotional condition for, for example you could just decide to stay in a location that is dangerous I see, because yes. you want to hold on to from past experience you want to hold on to family or whatever yeah. so you decide to stay in a location that is dangerous yes and as a result of staying in a location that is dangerous from a previous injury yeah. these events of war around you now are happening war is a lot of lawlessness generally yeah. and therefore people might come and rape you or harm you or you know hurt you in some way or steal from you or any of these other things that a lawless person will do under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's external events. Gotcha. Which have created inside of me an openness. Yes. To, uh, or, or the situation is now open for me to receive that harm. And then, so then there's an emotional disturbance inside of me. <clears throat> yes. Yep. Now I have the emotion from that individual has entered me mm -hmm. and now exists inside of me because I've allowed it or I was open to allowing it. Mm -hmm. So a child is open to allowing it, yep. an adult allows it. Allows it. Now, if we examine, say, an example of worth. Mm -hmm. So if I've been raised uh, with a continual pulling down of my worth yes. from a young age, yes. Then as I've grown into adulthood mm -hmm. and I haven't forgiven. It's highly unlikely you would have because you probably would feel quite hurt by that emotion and resentful and those kind of emotions. And so it's probably unlikely that you've let it go. So let's say in this case I have, haven't let it go. Mm -hmm. um, then you're saying that creates an openness in me. If somebody else continues as a, now as an adult to have the intention to harm me through pulling down my worth, yep. I'm quite likely to accrue more worth and more hurt rather. Is yes, it? or act in ways that repel the hurt but yep. cause damage to others. You'll yes. do one of the two. Yes. yes, yes. But in those cases, I would have something to forgive, not only from my childhood but from these towards these people in adulthood yes 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 if we contrast that then to where i've been raised with a very healthy sense of my worth mm -hmm. which is rare on earth but if i've been raised in a family where my worth was not elevated or pulled down yeah that it's very on rare. Earth doesn't happen but <laughs> very rare <laughs> yeah but assuming it did assuming it did uh, uh or pertaining to any other kind of injury yeah, no, no, my appearance fine. or whatever yeah um and then as an adult, somebody attempted to harm me through uh, trying to harm me in regards to my appearance, for example, if we use that example. But I've felt pretty healthy about that. I don't carry any hurt about that from my childhood. Will that unloving intention, sin, that has an emotional content, will that enter me as a hurt? Probably not. And so in those conditions, I would have nothing to forgive that person for. No, the person's still broken the law with the intention. They have. They have. So they have issues. But it's very but easy for issues? you to forgive because you don't feel any hurt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and forgiveness is emotional forgetfulness. 
Yes. As we will learn. Yes. So, so once we learn that, we see, oh, okay, because I don't feel that that really hurt me very much, there's hardly any emotion to let go of. To let go of. Mm. And we, we'll talk about how to forgive, which yes. is basically that. Right? Yeah. So, and that probably leads me neatly to the at one uh, condition that you raised. Yeah. Because in that example, you said that a person who's at one with God forgives those who desire to harm them immediately. Yes. And because they don't feel any hurt <sighs> at all. Yes. So does that, however, because we said that these are the conditions for forgiveness, that there's an entry of this unloving intention or mm. desire into another person, mm. does the person who's at one with God actually experience that entry of emotion and immediately forgive it, or it just doesn't enter? That so, all emotions for a person who's at one with God pass through them without there being any emotional response in them. So it does enter them. So it enters them. And there's a forgiveness process that happens because... But it's immediate because yes. there's no emotional response. Thank you for clarifying yeah. So it enters them still, just like it would enter a normal person under normal circumstances who has um, other emotional damage. But because there's nothing for in which it can resonate with, yes. it just passes straight through and out the other end, if you like. <laughs> straight through and one out uh, the other type of thing, yeah. straight in, out the yeah. other. But, you know, it's, that's how it feels. It's like, it, it's like it, it doesn't, there's nothing for, it, there's nothing inside of that soul for that emotion to remain in it. The, yeah. the conditions don't exist inside yeah. the soul. Yeah for the worthless emotion to remain in it mm. because the soul doesn't feel worthless mm. in the example you gave. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to clarify there is an actual substance that does enter and that is necessary for the forgiveness. So the first essential thing is the breaking of the law, mm -hmm. uh, the sin. Which is all emotional, remember. It's all emotional and it can be in ways that we don't yet want to be sensitive to or cognizant Thought. of. Thoughts as well as feelings and actions and intentions and desires. And, yes. Yep. That whole, the whole thing. The whole gambit of what can happen inside of the soul. Yeah. Mm. Towards another person that's harmful, a, an intention to harm them. It's an intention to be harmful, yes. Yeah. Or, or, or it could even be an accidental harm, of course. Yeah, yeah. Can be. It so, doesn't have to be specifically an intention. So just something that creates harm. Just something that creates harm. Yeah. For the other person. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an important distinction that we didn't make. So we can sin without the intention to sin, are you saying? Yes, of course. Yep. Of course. Yep. Sin, if we look at sin, sin means breaking the law. Yeah. We can break the law without the intention to break the law. Yes. Right. Or we can break the law with the intention to break the law. Yeah. Right. Or could you say we can break the law in ignorant, with sincere lack of knowledge of the law? Sometimes. And it's rare because a sincere ignorance requires effort generally. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we desire to be ignorant many times and we can't blame it on that. You know? So what was the example you gave just before? Sorry, it's just uh, you said we can, <clears throat> we can break the law without the intention to break the law and we can break it with intention. Yes. So how do I break the law without intention if my ignorance requires Let's say as effort? a child, we uh, are put in a situation where we don't understand much at all. Yes. Uh, for example, a child touching a hot stove is breaking yeah. the law. That's what I meant. Oh, so thermodynamics. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a genuine lack of knowledge of law yeah. that creates And no experience. Sin. Yeah. And so under those circumstances, the child's just made a mistake. Yeah. It has a, has a consequence. But that's very different than a person purposefully putting their hand on the stove. Totally. Yeah. Very, very different consequence. Yeah. yeah. Purposely doing it knowing that they're going to get burnt. Yeah. Or, or putting somebody else's hand on the stove knowing they're going to burn them. Yeah. Is very, very different than accidentally doing it. Yes. Or, or doing it without knowing. But under all circumstances, it's sin. Of course, it's sin, but of different degrees. Yes. Um, obviously, you sin. Yes, they're all sins because mm -hmm. we've broken the law. But the degree is whether it was intentional, unintentional, informed, mm -hmm. uninformed, ignorant, not ignorant. These are all considerations that the law, God's laws, measure. And remembering again, we're just talking here about whether I have something to forgive. Yes. So it's really just if somebody has harmed me uh, and 
it's just if somebody has harmed me, even if I'm at one with God, there's still something to forgive. Yes, the difference obviously is what we've stated already. Yeah. And that is that if I'm at one with God, because I have no emotional resonance with their intention, yep. it, it doesn't feel bad. But I still have to perform the process, don't I? You do, but it's instant. Yes. It's instant forgiveness. You know, this is how God forgives. It's instant. Mm. God forgives every act that we undertake instantly because God has no emotional resonance with the action we've taken mm. because those actions and feelings don't exist in God. Mm. But God so but God forgives us instantly. Mm. Um, but the law still operates. Yeah. Just because God's forgiven us instantly, it doesn't mean we have to, the law is going to change. Yeah. We've still got to go through the process of yeah. repentance under those circumstances to yes. benefit from the law. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you. Do you feel we've covered that? Yeah, I feel I feel it's important that our listeners get the idea yeah. that that firstly the law has to be been broken, mm. actually broken. Yeah. You know, many times on earth there is the interpretation that I've been hurt, you know. Mm. You, Quite often we have people say to us, you hurt me because you said this about me. And I said, but that's true. (laughs) And my intention wasn't to harm you. My intention was to help you see that that's the truth. So I don't see how I've sinned under those circumstances. It's true. Like, Now, if my intention was to harm you, well, that would be different. But my intention isn't to harm you. And uh, and so, you know, that's not true. So, So, yes, we often see things as being harmful when they're not actually harmful. Yeah. Here we're saying, no. The for, conditions under which I have something to forgive. forgive. It uh, has to be a yeah. real sin where somebody has disobeyed God's laws, intentionally or otherwise, and it's resulted in harm for me. Beautiful. Right. And, and remember, disobeying God's laws includes things like addictions, projection of emotion, projection of feelings, fear. Yeah. So it's very refined. Yeah. <clears throat> when you mentioned fear, what do you mean by that? Well, the holding on to fear is a sin. Yeah. And and the desire to affect others through fear, manipulate others through your fear, is a sin mm. from God's perspective. You're disobeying God's laws. You're becoming manipulative in order to avoid sin, mm. in order to avoid fear, sorry. Yeah. So, so it, it's a harmful process that you're yeah. engaging now. So there's a lot of people who justify sin on the basis of, I'm afraid, so therefore I can sin. Yeah. And that's not how God sees it. God yeah. says, you're afraid, but you're sinning. I'm going to still measure the sin. <laughs> and it's an intention. Yeah. Whether it's driven by fear or not, it's an intention to sin. And it is an intention. Every intention to sin does harm others. Yes. And, and your fear uh, intentionally is harm. You're intentionally harming others. You're intentionally attempting to manipulate others. It's harming people. Mm. It's a sin, mm. whether you think it's justified or not. It's immaterial to God yeah. and immaterial to the law. Yeah, like it's a sin. It's going to be corrected. Mm. Right, and it is any time a person disobeys the law. Yeah, any time for whatever reason. It doesn't matter what reasons. Obviously, some reasons are worse than others, yeah. and they will be measured, but it doesn't really matter what reason. So, it's, yeah. This is sin. If somebody has sinned and they have projected that particular sin towards myself, mm-hmm. then I have something to forgive. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm at one with God, I'll do it instantly because there's no emotional resonance within me. There's nothing inside of me that I have to feel about it. Yeah. I recognize it as their feeling, not mine. Yes. Emotionally. Yes. And you mentioned the person who is not yet at one with God, but who has less resonance with the way in which a person is trying to manipulate or harm them. Mm. They will find it easier to f- forgive. Correct. Because there's less resonance. And we're going to get onto the process of forgiveness in our next discussion. Yeah. But yeah. But because there's less resonance internally, there's nothing that it affect. There's no. There's li- very little ways in which that sin has affected them. Yeah. From God's perspective, the sin is just as severe as if it had affected them. Yes. Yes. So, from the way God measures the original sin on the perpetrator's part, is that it's just as bad as if mm. it, it, when nobody's affected as it is when everybody is. Yeah. Right. That's how God measures it. Mm-hmm. But. But on this part of the person who's received the projection emotionally, received the action, received the sin, yeah. the intention to be harmed, if there's no resonance inside of them, they won't be harmed by it. 
So, you know, quite often, for example, we receive emails that say um, things like, oh, you're a, you're a homosexual, blah, 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 and they rave on about as if I'm going to feel bad about being a homosexual, <laughs> right? And it does have no effect on me whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not confused about my gender, my you sexual uh, uh, preference. Oh. And, and my preferences. And so it has no effect on me whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so in that regard, there's no emotional resonance in me and that person can, they're still sinning mm. and their intention is still the same. And when, because we're talking here about forgiveness, you're saying that it's almost like, it almost feels like there's nothing to forgive because it doesn't really affect you or do well, you Well, no, feel... I recognise the error. Yep. You see, sin requires the receiver to understand that there is an error in the perpetrator's action. Yes. So I recognise the error in their action. Mm-hmm. But there's no emotional resonance in me that requires an action on my part. But do you feel you've forgiven them? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so other times there's an emotional resonance in me. Yeah. And then I've, I know I've got, well, I've got a fair bit of work to do here because yeah. I've got not only to forgive that person, but I've now got to work through the reason why this open, open emotional resonance has occurred. And yeah. that's related to other things I haven't forgiven from my childhood events. Yes. And that requires quite a lot of work on my part now. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about the mechanism later. Yeah. But it, uh, just using that as an illustration to see how sometimes there's emotional resonance, sometimes not. Also here, we're not talking about denial of emotion. So a lot of people think there's no emotional resonance when it's quite obvious there is huge emotional resonance between yeah. them about something. Yeah. And that's d complete denial. And that's not what we're talking about here. No. We're talking about the emotional experience being fully aware yep. that the person has perpetrated a sin towards you, mm -hmm. a sin towards God, breaking God's laws that have has affected you, and that you recognize that action is wrong from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And... You also, after recognising it's wrong, have let go of any emotional response that you now have to that event. So that's the process of forgiveness. But we, the conditions under which we have something to forgive, it's just that that very first thing happens. The very first thing yeah. has to happen, yes. Yes. That's right. So okay. we need to understand that those conditions have to exist. And and the reason why we raise this in the, in the presentation now is because there are a lot of times when people think they've got to forgive somebody else when they, when they don't. don't. And there's a lot of times when people think they've got nothing to forgive when they've got huge things to forgive. Yes. Right? Because they're not recognising the sin of the other person. Yeah. They don't even believe it's a sin. Yeah. So we see this a lot with addictions. Yeah. Where if you've got a codependent addiction, let's say you've got an addiction with me and you perpetrate... You make you make me feel safe and I'll make you feel like you're a very worth, worthwhile worth man. Worth having sex with or whatever, yeah. you know. So, so, so let's say that's a codependent addiction, right? Mm -hmm. So now your projection at me that I make you feel safe from God's perspective is a sin mm -hmm. and breaking one of God's laws because you're not owning your fear, you're not feeling your fear, you're not releasing it, you're expecting somebody else to, mm -hmm. demanding that somebody else make it go away and so forth. There's a lot of reasons why it's a sin from God's perspective. That exists within you. And right? something that you're going to have to forgive. And I, but I'm happy that that exists in you. Yeah, because you get the payoff. Because I get the sexual payoff, yeah. which is a sin that exists in me. Yeah. Now, under those circumstances, we've both sinned. Mm -hmm. right? We both are not recognising that there is, in fact, a sin, a, a breaking of God's laws, an most, attempt to disobey God's laws. Most couples think that it's a good relationship when both are Correct. equally getting the codependence met. Like yeah, that. most couples yeah. would think, oh, great relationship. This yeah. is fantastic. Now, now to, 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 to forgive anybody, we need to first recognise the sin mm. in something. And that's where I see a lot of people go astray yeah. because they, they, don't, they think there's sin in things that are not sinful and then they think there's no sin in things that are terribly yeah. sinful. Yeah. And addictions are one of the things that most people think, that's not a sin, that's just me pleasing her and she's pleasing me and it's fantastic. And from God's perspective, both of you are sinning intensely. Yes. And there will be consequences for that. So, you know, this is why we raise the issue, what are the conditions under which forgiveness has to occur? It first has to be the recognition <laughs> of the sin. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the recognition that somebody Well, the disobeyed. truth that there is sin. 
the truth. Yeah. Yeah, and that there's a disobedience to God's laws, mm. a, dis- a desire to disobey God's laws. Mm. Yeah, mm. and that has to exist before I can forgive anything. Yeah. Yeah, so that is a very important thing, I feel, that we need yes. to emphasise in this discussion. Yes. Mm. Moving on, yeah. which follows neatly on our discussion about the conditions under which we have something to forgive, mm-hmm. is that God's laws also determine when we have something to repent for. Mm. And while this whole series is not really about repentance, it's a bit remiss of us not to at least talk a little bit about repentance when we're talking about forgiveness because yeah. they are so closely intertwined. And even in our previous segment just now, you were ending up talking about a lot of conditions under which there's something to repent for because yes. it follows naturally because there's an interaction between two people, isn't there? Not only that, there is a lot of confusion on the planet about forgiveness versus repentance and yes. when I should forgive and when I should repent. And so naturally, it sort of uh, it, it requires a complete, more complete discussion of both subjects yeah. before we can sort of discuss forgiveness in more detail. Yeah. We need to understand, well, no, there are certain conditions where forgiveness is true mm-hmm. and can be, can be engaged from a scientific mathematical <laughs> process, from yeah. law-based issues. Yeah. And there's certain situations under which repentance can be engaged yes. mathematically, scientifically, under law-based principles. And and we can't confuse the two because if we try to, we'll have no result whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And as I mentioned in our previous section, a lot of times people think they have something to forgive when they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we get to the area of repentance, often we can feel like we have something to repent for when we don't, or we feel we have nothing to repent for when we do. And we have a mountain of things yes. <laughs> to repent for. <laughs> and Often we're more sensitive to when people are harming us to when we are harming other people, which Very is another problem. So. It's a huge problem, isn't yeah. it? But yeah. like every person thinks I'm getting hurt when I'm getting told the truth, for example. Most people on the planet think that. And, and I know for me, when I first <laughs> met you, you'd tell me the truth. And um, I'd feel perfectly justified in like <laughs> getting really angry and projecting at you. I thought you were hurting me and I wasn't seeing how much I was actually wanting to shut you down. I was wanting to control you with mm. with my projection, for example. Mm. And that is actually something that I need to repent for, mm. whereas I felt like I was the harm party. Exactly. We yeah. frequently believe we're the harm party when yeah. we are actually the party doing the harm. Yeah. 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 So this is a poor sense of self-analysis, yes. poor self, 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 sense of self-awareness. Yes. That, and obviously we need to become more developed in our self-awareness before we can understand <laughs> whether we actually harm somebody or, or not. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So let's just briefly cover what are the conditions under which someone has something to repent? Well, it's very similar, isn't it, to yeah. the conditions under which someone has to forgive, just flipped on who does it. Yeah. So, in other words, if I have a thought, word, action, desire, intention to harm from God's perspective, to break one of God's laws, not break, remember? Disobey. To disobey, because we can't break them. No. To I sin. I have an intention yeah. to sin. I have an intention to disobey one of God's laws and and it doesn't have to be just an intention to disobey. It could be accidental disobedience to God's laws, but to meet my demands or addictions or whatever the other things are that I'm going to be met, going to get met by this feeling that I have that I want to mm-hmm. do the action I'm taking. And that finishes up harming you. Yep. Or even if it doesn't harm you. It's just the intention. It's just my it's, intention. Or just the the action of yep. sin, even if the intention was then not. Then I harm. have something to repent for. Yes. And and again, it can be the intention to harm or the inadvertent harm. Or the intention to use God's laws to harm. Yes. <laughs> so. All of those conditions, I have something to repent for. Mm. Yeah. And it's actually a condition inside of my soul emotionally, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is now. What happens is as soon as I take an action in disobedience to God's laws, as we've pointed out previously in previous parts of this discussion, yeah. 
we instantly have a soul-based emotional mathematical thing happens to our soul hmm. that in, that causes us to now be in a specific condition that demands repentance hmm. needs to occur to recover from that condition. Hmm. So whereas before when we were talking about the conditions under which I have something to forgive, we talked about a substance coming from the person who harms me entering my soul. Mm -hmm. Now when we're talking about when I have something to repent, as a result of my sinning, mm -hmm. there's actually the operations of the law working upon my soul, which are causing things to enter or change within me, yes. which are painful. Yes, and on top of that, there's also the painful feeling that I have towards you that began yes. the whole thing. Yes. So there's that plus now the compensatory yes. effects. So that painful feeling... The original painful feeling or the, the, the compensatory sorry. ones? No, no, the original one, the yeah. one that I where I want to harm you. Yes. Now that can enter you and hurt you, for yes. which you would have something to forgive me for. Yeah. But you're saying that that emotion also, because it exists inside of me... It's already harming you. It goes towards you, but it's already in me. It's already harming me, yes. even without the operation. And of it's the harming you more than it's harming me. Mm. Mm. That's the way God's designed it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to harm you more. Yeah. And it harms me in the long run. Yeah. It's going to be harder for you to remove than it was for me to remove. Yeah. It's going to be more difficult for you to repent than it is for me to forgive you. So, if I consider, so there's certain things that I, I personally struggle to forgive from my past. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying then that the people who did harm me who did, from God's perspective, harm me mm -hmm. uh, uh, for these areas uh, in these ways, they are going to find it harder than I'm currently finding it to forgive, to actually to repent for what they did. Um, well, Is that true? Because you might be more humble. It's potentially true. It's it potentially depends true. on humility, yeah. obviously. Yeah. If, if they are very, very humble... They could do it. They could do it. Quicker than me. But they will have more to go through than you had. Uh-huh. That's a distinct. There's an amount that's more. Yes. But if they're very humble, they will do it. They, they, will, they could even potentially do it more rapidly than you. Yes. Because they're very humble. Yeah. But there will be more. And that's why you said earlier it'll be harder. Yes. It'll be harder for because, the person who has to repent. To it's address. just a quantity issue. A quantity that's more yeah. inside of them. Whenever you perpetrate a harm towards another, the harm the other first person experiences mm -hmm is lower in quantity than the harm you're doing to your own soul. Yeah. And so when it comes to releasing this harm, it's going to be more quantity that I'm going to have to release than it is the other person having to release. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very important thing to understand, actually. You're doing more harm to yourself than you are to the other person. Mm -hmm. And most people don't believe that, of course. They believe the opposite of that. Yeah. And so they continue the harm, which actually does even more harm again and more yeah. harm again. Yeah. And this is why people who have a tendency to harm others have a lot more yeah. and find it a lot more difficult yeah. to actually repent than the people who that harmed have find it difficult to forgive. Mm. Mm. And it really brings into awareness, it brings into focus then that point you just made, the importance of becoming sensitive or to correctly analysing or to correctly understanding when we have something to repent for versus when we have something to forgive for. Mm. Because as we've spoken about, it's very common to be confused about those two things. And I know, you mm -hmm. know, uh, for myself and people I know around me, often we're trying to repent for things which we didn't harm anyone mm -hmm. and we are resisting forgiveness for things that we know did harm us. But sometimes we're also wanting to remain in denial of things that actually have harmed us. That actually have harmed us. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're also avoiding and wanting to remain in denial of many areas where we're harming others. Yeah. And so, but given... It's a bit of a minefield. <laughs> it's a total minefield. And it takes development, doesn't it? Or yeah. intention and desire on the person, of the individual to, to get sensitive. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why we talked a little bit about feeling God's feelings. Because mm. this simplifies matters greatly. Mm. If we are able to feel God's feelings about a matter, then we'll know whether we need to forgive somebody or we need to repent for something. 
And if we're not able to feel God's feelings about the matter, then we have to work it all out through the other methods of obtaining truth, mm. which are the methods associated with observation, personal experience and law based analysis and all these other things, which is what I see most people engaging. In. You know, they get, when we talk about repentance and forgiveness, there's this real big, you know, there's this, all this fear comes up, and there's all this analysis comes up and all these other things pop up and it becomes very confusing very rapidly. And the main reason why is because they can't feel God mm. and can't therefore have God telling them, no, you need to forgive this or you need to repent this. Mm. And this is what makes life very, very simple, is if you connect it to God, you have the ability to know very, very rapidly what you need to forgive and what you need to repent. So it simplifies your life greatly. So for yourself, have you gone through emotions where you've, feel like I know for me I catch myself feeling very much like I need to repent for certain things because of the way that I was trained in my childhood basically to f believe I'm harming others when I'm just being myself for example mm -hmm. or um so it's not real repentance is it that you're talking about here no I, but it's a feeling that I need to repent that I'm it's a, it's but a it's belief I've done saying. that I'm sinning. Yes, it's in that I can see through analysis. So you being yourself is not a sin. No. <laughs> and me not serving and keeping in touch with every single person that I've ever met in my life and making sure that they're okay. That's not that's a sin. That's not a sin either. But internally, there's times where I feel very much like I'm doing the wrong thing by not doing those things by being myself or by not serving and keeping in touch with and worrying yes. about everyone I've ever met. Yes. So have you had to... Uh, so can I, can I just say, before yeah. you ask the question, that means, though, that if you try to repent for those things, nothing is going to happen. There's going to be no <laughs> change whatsoever in your life because you don't have to repent for any of those things because all of those things are okay from God's perspective. Yes. You have to forgive for those things. And yes. if you refuse to forgive for those things, then there will be no change in your life either. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. very important. To it is. Yes. And your question was now that I've interrupted. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, I was just considering whether this is the right place to talk about it. Um, but it, have you had to go through, because you're talking about being sensitive to God's feelings, which I immediately associate with in a heightened sensitivity with my own feelings is required before I can feel God's feelings. Yep. And so I do appear at times to be full of feelings that are such as I've just um, described. described, painful, guilty kind of feelings like I'm letting everyone down mm -hmm. sort of or being a bad person for, for showing up and being myself. Mm -hmm. Have you had to sort of ex experience that emotionally as a part of becoming more sensitive to yourself emotionally? Yeah, there's been times when I, you know, I had a very bad opinion of myself, yeah. as you know, and, and so... Um, I've had to work my way through that bad opinion of myself. The yeah. bad opinion of myself was a sin of my own. Yes. It was perpetrated towards me from others, which I've had to also recognise because mm. uh, I would be very accepting of other people thinking that I'm no good. Mm. And so I had to work my way through those feelings to recognise the sin mm. in their actions. So it, by experiencing those feelings? Yeah. yeah. And then I also had to go through the emotions relating to why I wanted to hold on yeah. to this bad opinion of myself, which had a lot to do with fear-based yeah. issues rather than worth-based issues. Yes. So it has a lot to do with trying to avoid the attack from others mm -hmm. rather than actually feeling like I'm no good, you know. So, yeah, yeah. The, you do have to, it takes time to become open and aware mm. uh, towards what it is that you actually have to forgive and what it is that you actually have to repent for. Mm. And, and it is sometimes, initially, when you start the process, it can be sometimes confusing because you're not connected to God mm. and you're not feeling God's feelings on the matter. So you have to use the other methods of determining mm. truth before you can work it all out. Mm. So, yeah, it can be can be a little frustrating in that beginning time of the whole process mm. and particularly if you're avoiding your relationship with God. Yeah, mm. yeah. But it strikes me though, as you've said and as you know about myself, like 
the more that I'm willing to just be sensitive, the more you see the investments emotionally, you begin to feel your emotional investment in holding on to these states that are mm. generating all these guilt-based kind of terrible about myself feelings. It's a lot about avoiding fear, but if I just want to be more and more sensitive to my feelings, I'll establish that, won't I? You will. Yeah. You will quite rapidly. This yeah. is where humility, obviously, is a key quality, yeah. as we've discussed. Many times. Because it's like... Without humility, you you get into a state where you're not humble to the actual emotions that are generating your condition. And if you don't do that, obviously, it's very hard to determine what's actually going on yeah. if you're not connected to God. Yeah. And obviously, to be connected to God, you have to be quite humble anyway. Yeah. So, you know, humility is a key emotion yep. to develop when it comes to determining these matters. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. That's a mm. that's a great point just to raise about becoming more sensitive to when we do have um, something to forgive mm -hmm. and something to repent. Yes. As we pointed out in the preamble to both of these discussions about forgiveness and repentance, we are often confused. Mm -hmm. We often believe we have something to forgive when we don't. Yeah. And we often believe we have something to repent for when we don't. Yes. And we often believe other people have something to repent for when they don't. And yeah. we often believe that other people have something to forgive us for when they don't. Yeah. So, you know, quite often you hear a person say, oh, forgive me for telling you the truth. What? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to forgive. Yeah. You know, and, and then other times you have, oh, I'm really angry with you because you told me the truth, you know. Mm -hmm you know, nothing to be angry about, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's the fact that you're angry about it is for some other reason that you need to work through internally. Yes. But it's certainly not a sin for the other person to tell you the truth. And it, it depends, of course, as I said, on intention, because we've and we've discussed that as well. Yeah. If I intend to hurt you with the truth, well, that's a different matter. That's a whole different matter. But if I intend to help you by telling you the truth. Yeah. And if, if your intentions are always to help somebody by telling them the truth, mm. You will never sin by telling the truth. No. You can never sin yeah. by telling the truth. Yeah. If that's your intention. Yeah. So it's wonderful that God's measured it this way and the laws pertain to these things in the way they do. And we can see clearly what forgiveness, what the conditions are for forgiveness, mm -hmm. and we can see clearly what the conditions are for repentance. For repentance. So now it's just a matter of what, what <laughs> how do we engage the process? Yeah, let's get to it. <laughs>